Welcome, dear enthusiasts of mythology. It's evident that your curiosity has drawn you to this captivating journey through the realms of history, mythology, and legend. From Hercules and Jason to Ulysses and Achilles, Perseus and Roland, Arthur and Merlin, Joan of Arc to Melon, these extraordinary tales have etched their mark on our collective imagination for generations. But what if I unveil the written epic not passed down through oral tradition, yet so ancient that is for days the Iliad, the Odyssey, and even the Bible? This is the epic of Gilgamesh, a saga that profoundly shaped the thinking of ancient Mesopotamians for nearly two millennia. It's the story of Gilgamesh, the formidable king of the Sumerian city of Uruk. However, Gilgamesh was not a benevolent ruler. His harsh treatment of his subject drew the attention of the gods, who decided to send him a test. They created Enkido, a wild counterpart to Gilgamesh, raised in the wilderness and destined to challenge him. Their battle was fierce, but no victory emerged. Instead, Enkido and Gilgamesh formed an unbreakable band of friendship embarking on an extraordinary adventure to the west. Their journey led them to a vast city forest in what is now Lebanon, guarded by the monstrous giant Humbaba. With unwavering courage, the two friends vanquished Humbaba, securing the precious cedar wood they saw. Upon their return, Ishtar, the goddess of love and war, sought to seduce Gilgamesh, but he refused, citing her destructive reputation. Enraged by his rejection, Ishtar complained to the gods who unleashed a ball of heaven upon the city, sowing desolation and chaos. Despite their triumph over the monstrous ball of heaven, Gilgamesh and Enkidu faced a devastating consequence. Enkidu's impulsive act of throwing the ball's thigh in Ishtar's face enraged the gods, who decreed Enkidu's fate a sudden demise. Gilgamesh was plunged into a profound sorrow, his heart heavy with loss. Enkidu's death served as a stark reminder of Gilgamesh's own mortality, a realization he couldn't bear. His yearning for eternal life became an all-consuming desire. Driven by this relentless pursuit, Gilgamesh embarked on a perilous journey to the ends of the world, seeking the counsel of Tanapishtim, the only mortal to attain immortality. Gilgamesh's quest for immortality led him to the far corners of the world, where he encountered the Tanapishtim, the survivor of a cataclysmic flood. The Tanapishtim revealed that immortality was a divine gift bestowed upon him and his wife alone, not attainable by others. Yet he offered Gilgamesh a magical plan that could restore his youth and vigor, at least until his natural end. Eager to grasp at any hope, Gilgamesh seized the plant and eagerly set off for home. However, as he bathed in the Euphrates River, a cunning snake snatched the plant away, shattering his dreams of immortality. Despite this setback, Gilgamesh's journey had profoundly transformed him. He had confronted the reality of mortality and recognized the importance of leaving a lasting legacy. Upon his return to Uruk, he dedicated himself to building a magnificent city wall, ensuring its prosperity and safeguarding his place in its history. This is the classic version of the epic of Gilgamesh, the first to be discovered. However, there are other earlier adventure stories about our hero as well. In 1849, archaeologist Elston Henry Lyard made a remarkable discovery at the archaeological site of Nineveh near Mosul in Iraq. He 
be on earth numerous small clay tablets engraved with strange wedge-shaped symbols known as cuneiform. There were so many tablets, in fact, that they numbered an astonishing 22,000. Unknowingly, Lyard had stumbled upon the library of Assyrian king Assurbanipal, who reigned between 668 and 627 BC. It took several years for the scientific community to fully grasp the significance of this remarkable find. It was only in 1872 that the Assyriologist George Smith managed to decipher the content of 12 of these tablets, revealing the epic story of Gilgamesh. This discovery sent shockwaves through the academic world, igniting a passionate interest in this ancient tale. In fact, the first public reading of the epic was held in the presence of the British Prime Minister himself. The excitement didn't stop there, as more tablets were unearthed at other archaeological sites. This growing corpus of texts has provided invaluable insights into the evolution of the epic over time. To get our bearings, let's delve into chronology of ancient Mesopotamia, the Sumerian city of Uruk, nestled between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, emerged around 3000 BC. This is where writing was born, initially etched into rocks before being inscribed on clay tablets. While there is a possibility of a king named Gilgamesh ruling Uruk between 2800 and 2600 BC, we'll revisit this later. After being conquered by the Akkadian, the Sumerian staged a remarkable comeback around 2100 or 2000 BC. They established a formidable dynasty that governed the city of Ur. It was during this period that the epic adventures of Gilgamesh were committed to writing, most likely based on much older oral traditions. These oral tales themselves likely trace their roots to an even more ancient era. The act of putting these histories into writing served as a means of preservation and a way for the Sumerians to bluster their threatens legitimacy by glorifying a heroic ancestor. However, their fortunes took a turn for the worse after 2000 BC, when the Sumerian dynasty of Ur succumbed to the Amorites who ascended to power in the region. Despite these setbacks, the dissemination of the Gilgamesh tales persisted. They were passed down through generations. Initially, in Sumerian, then in Akkadian, and eventually in other languages like Hittite or Hurrian. To understand the linguistic transition from Sumerian to Akkadian, let's delve into the linguistic landscape of ancient Mesopotamia. Sumerian, a linguistic isolate, stands apart from any other language family bearing no resemblance to any other tongue. It employs ideograms where each symbol represents a word or an idea. In contrast, Akkadian belonging to the Semitic language group shares similarities with languages like Arabic and Hebrew. It consists of phonograms where each symbol represents a sound or a syllable. These two distinct languages coexisted and offer intertwined, resulting in text framing with intricate concepts and evocative imagery. Imagine the challenge of translating these texts, especially for scribes who struggle to master both languages with perfection. Around 2300 BC, Significant reforms were instituted to standardize the training of scribes and these reforms continued well into the period when the famous classic version of the Epic of Gilgamesh was compiled around 1300 to 1200 BC. This millennium-long educational overhaul would put even the most dedicated minister of education to shame. 
The culmination of these efforts was the creation of 12 tablets containing the epic, which were eventually copied in 650 BC for King Asurbanipal, leading to the discovery that astonished the world. Additional tablets dating from 113 BC have also been unearthed, further enriching our understanding of this literary masterpiece. Apologies for the barrage of dates, but they serve as a testament to the enduring legacy of the Epic of Gilgamesh, spanning over 2,500 years of human history. Kingdoms have crumbled, empires have risen and fallen, languages have evolved, yet the tale of Gilgamesh has preserved, transforming from a mere story to a legend and eventually becoming an enduring myth. At this point, we begin to grasp the profound impact of this work on the annals of human history. However, the question lingers, is it all just a grand myth? The historical existence of Gilgamesh sparks endless debate and speculation. While we need not question whether a man could have conquered a giant or a ball of heaven, the question remains, did Uruk truly have a king named Gilgamesh? The inspiration for this epic narrative? Even today, a definite answer remains elusive. The name Gilgamesh appears in a crucial source for archaeologists and historians, the Sumerian royal list, which purports to provide a comprehensive chronology of all the kings and dynasties that ruled over Sumer. However, this list is not without its flaws containing inaccuracies and fantastical elements. For instance, it suggests that Gilgamesh's reign lasted a staggering 126 years. To verify this claim, we could ideally compare the list with other contemporary Sumerian texts. Unfortunately, none of these texts date back to the time of Gilgamesh. At best, they were written 500 years after his supposed existence. In a sense, our written sources for Gilgamesh's existence are fragmented and inconclusive. We just therefore rely on the hope of archaeological discoveries from his era. Just as we do for certain other kings mentioned in the list. One potential piece of evidence to support the existence of a historical Gilgamesh is the presence of an extensive wall at the Uruk site. This imposing structure, stretching 9.5 kilometers and boasting 900 towers, is believed by archaeologists to date back to the time associated with Gilgamesh. Interestingly, the epic itself concludes with the construction of a magnificent wall by the wise Gilgamesh. Could this entire legend be a romanticized celebration of a builder king whose reign marked a period of prosperity? The question of whether Gilgamesh was a historical figure or a complete invention remains open. But one thing is certain. The epic has become a truly fantastic tale, placing Gilgamesh alongside the heroes of the Iliad and the Odyssey, or even the Arthurian legends. Regardless of his historical veracity, the story of Gilgamesh holds immense mythical and moral significance. Perhaps the most fascinating aspect of this whole saga is what it reveals about the worldview of the Mesopotamians. The earliest versions of the epic of Gilgamesh are filled with heroic exploit and optimistic overtones featuring journeys, misadventures, and grand battles that Gilgamesh and Enkidu always conquered together. However, in the later classic version, a darker reflection on human mortality emerges. Mesopotamian intellectuals began to view the world through a less magical prism than their ancestors, adopting a more realistic and pessimistic perspective. Nevertheless, the values of their civilization remains firmly entrenched, as exemplified by Gilgamesh's introduction of Enkidu to the civilized world. 
The wild child underwent a process of civilization in several stages. First, he encountered the prostitute who seduced him, initiating him into the mysteries of human sexuality. Then, he was close, symbolizing the transition from nature to culture. Next, he discovered bread and beer, the staples of Mesopotamian civilization, leading to his first experience of intoxication. Afterward, he was shaved and perfumed, marking his transformation from a wild man into a civilized individual. Finally, Gilgamesh's mother adopted Enkido, officially welcoming him into the human community. These elements reflect the core aspects of Mesopotamian society, the importance of sexual reproduction and sacred prostitution, agriculture, clothing, hygiene, and the central role of the family. It is through these societal structures that humans are distinguished from animals and elevate themselves to a higher plane of existence. At the heart of this story lies the ultimate goal of Enkido, representing the epitome of Mesopotamian society. The city, the foundation upon which individual worth is established. It is by relinquishing his childhood fantasies of immortality that Gilgamesh fully dedicates himself to his kingdom. Through this unwavering commitment, he ascends to the pinnacle of kingship. As the arrival of new civilization like the Greeks and Romans swept over Mesopotamia, the tale of Gilgamesh faded into oblivion. However, its profound influence on literary works and even monotheistic religions persisted. The epic of Gilgamesh's impact is evident in the theme and structure of the Iliad and Odyssey. In religious context, Gilgamesh's legacy is deeply embedded throughout various traditions. One striking example is the immortal Tanapishtim, whose narrative mirrors that have Noah in the Bible. Warned by the gods of an impending flood, Tanapishtim builds a colossal ark and embarks on a perilous journey, preserving a pair of every animal from the impending cataclysm. In the 15th century, the Mesopotamian influence extended to Muslim demonology, where a demon named Jijamish emerged. This connection is unsurprising considering the Hebrew people's Babylonian exile in the 6th century BC coinciding with the genesis of numerous biblical texts. Genesis, therefore, bears a strong Babylonian imprint, and Islam stands as a testament to this enduring legacy. This introduction serves as a glimpse into the epic of Gilgamesh's literary journey his dissemination and enduring influence. While the intricacies of the epic remains unexplored, I encourage you to embark on your own exploration to uncover its remarkable gems of human wisdom and its profound impact on our collective understanding. We appreciate you watching this episode. Please show your support by liking, sharing, commenting and subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more exciting stories.